What's good, YouTube man? Welcome back to the channel. Meet you back here in another video by the title and thumbnail. Y'all see what we are reacting to. Every song on Evermore explained in eight minutes by Madison Grace. Everybody say thank you, Madison. Thank you, Madison. But if you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. Roll the 10 k is on the way. And if you haven't seen my Evermore album reaction, go check that out. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I know I like my background. And if Madison is wrong, I know I got some Swifties. So tell me. You know what I'm saying? Correct her if you if she wrong though. You know what I'm saying? But don't get on her too bad. Don't get on Madison, cause me and Madison locked in around her. But subscribe and let's get to the video, man. <laughs> Taylor Swift just dropped her ninth studio album titled Evermore, which is the sister album to Folklore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a new genre that Taylor has been exploring. We reacted and to that too. It kind of though. centers around telling stories that aren't necessarily her own narrative. And the explanation. Everyone has been really loving it, and I decided to kind of explain all of the details behind the songs on Evermore. I recommend listening to the album first before you listen to we the video. We did that. Because I'm going to kind of go in depth about each song on the album and what it okay. means. Track one, which is also the lead single, is titled Willow. The song is very reminiscent of Invisible String on Folklore. And the theme is verified in the music video when she's holding the single thread of gold. Mm, I gotta watch that. Which is referenced that. in Invisible String in the line, One single thread of gold tied me to you. Taylor herself says it is about intrigue, desire, and the complexity that goes into wanting somebody. I think it sounds like casting a spell to make somebody fall in love with Tight her. Beat. By comparing her life with her lover to a willow tree, she is saying that it is strong but can sometimes look out of control, much like how willow trees mm. look. The second song, Champagne Problems, is my favorite on the album so far, okay. but I'm sure it will change. This song details the relationship of a man and a woman. The woman turns down the man's proposal right before Christmas and surprises him and all of his family members. It seems as though the protagonist has a history of mental illness, which is stigmatized through gossip as champagne problems. Okay. With a bittersweet ending, the protagonist wishes that the man will find a woman who won't hurt him the way she did. Mm. Taylor's boyfriend, Joe, co-wrote the song with her. Taylor we learned a little bit about Joe, you know what I'm saying? But we don't know too, too much about Joe. We revealed that William Bowery, who is listed on the credits in some of the songs on Folklore, is actually Joe Allen, who is her boyfriend. Dang, what? Track three, titled Gold Rush, is Jack Antonoff's favorite, who produces a lot of songs with okay. Taylor. Okay. The song is about jealousy. <laughs> I be seeing the comments, bro. First of all, Gold Rush was so booty. Oh my goodness. I'm standing on that. But I've been seeing the comments that saying me and him got beef. Jack, this guy. It ain't Jack. no smoke. It's just like, I don't like how he be composing sometimes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Antonoff's favorite, who produces a lot of songs with Taylor. The song is about jealousy, specifically being attracted to somebody that everyone else is attracted to as well. Mm. In one line, she sings, That's interesting. And mine turns your life into folklore, which is an obvious nod at the preceding album. Overall, the song is a daydream that she snaps herself out of because she doesn't want to get caught in liking somebody. That's that pretty crazy, right? You would be like, you would think it's cool. Like, damn, everybody like what I got. Like, yeah, you'd be like, but I never thought you could get some jealousy from that. I, I've never thought about it like that. That's crazy. That everybody else wants as well. Track four, titled Tis the Damn Season, was actually teased by Taylor a few days before releasing Evermore. She teased it when she posted a picture of her outfit to the story and said, quote, this outfit screams, tis the damn season. Mm -hmm. Okay. Taylor has alluded to the fact the that vision. the protagonist in this song is Dorothea, who was sung about on track eight. The song centers around Dorothea returning to her hometown during the holidays and rekindles with an old flame. She's hopeful that this will work out, despite her inevitably returning to Hollywood. Okay. Every Swifty knows that track fives are the most vulnerable songs on any album. Tolerate It is no exception. This song Where do y'all rank these sister albums? You know what I'm saying? Reputation, folklore, and um... Evermore. Like, where do y'all rank it? If I had to rank it, I go folklore, reputation, evermore. That's it, Nito. About giving somebody unconditional love and wanting to receive the same, but being ignored and only tolerated. Mm. During the bridge, she breaks free from feeling like she should continue giving unconditional love that is only tolerated. But the ending of I Sit and Watch You, which is also said in the beginning of the song, gives the illusion that these were all thoughts and that she won't necessarily act It's crazy. Them. Her song's Track so six, in depth. No Body, No Crime is another one of my favorite songs on this album. Like what? She it's really, it's like stories behind her songs. It's like, whoa, she got books behind just a song. It is crazy. It does get a little bit intricate though. This is a murder mystery song that centers around the protagonist, Esty, who's actually Taylor's longtime friend. Esty's husband was cheating on her, Damn. which is mentioned in the first Damn, verse. Damn, Esty. Suddenly, Esty goes missing, and the husband reports his missing wife. 
His mistress moves in, and the line, I noticed when I passed his house, his truck has got some brand new tires. Crazy. Taylor could be implying that Esty confronted her husband about his affair and slashed his tires. Taylor believes that the husband murdered Esty, and Taylor begins to avenge him. The husband is killed, and everybody believes that the mistress killed wow. him to gain the life insurance. That's money. fire. When in reality, that's a, Taylor this is a little one. fire, like, timeline type of book. I will read this type book. I hate reading books, but I dabble. You know what I'm saying? This would be something that I read, though. That's fire. Who murdered him? Taylor has mentioned that she drew the inspiration for this song from all of the murder mystery podcasts that she's been listening to over quarantine. Track 7, Happiness, is essentially a bittersweet song about the end of a relationship where hope still exists. She acknowledges that when you're with somebody, you become a different version of yourself. Mm. She sings the line, and in the disbelief, I can't face re I haven't met the new me. Dang! I feel like love do change you, man. I feel like you're a whole different human being when you have to, like... Like, as a dude, we have to, like, look out for you. You know what I'm saying? Care for you. Stuff like that. It's like a whole different side of us. It's like, whoa... Like, from the side where, where we just alone by ourselves, chilling, or just around other people. But, like, when you love somebody, and, like, you don't know what you might do, you know? But that's just being a human, though, cuz. <laughs> yeah. The chorus, there'll be happiness after you, but there was happiness because of you, shows how just because the relationship made her happy, it doesn't mean that she was unhappy before him, or will be unhappy after Type him. Type shit. She changes the lyrics to, there'll be happiness after me, but there was happiness because of it, mm -hmm. which acknowledges herself. Track 8 is Dorothea, yeah. which is mentioned earlier in track 4. Fire. Dorothea is a girl who left her small town to chase down Hollywood dreams, as stated by Taylor. This song seems to be sung from the perspective of an old hometown fling, perhaps the one mentioned in Tis the Damn Season. It's about how this narrator only sees Dorothea on the television and how he wishes she would come back. This track paints Dorothea out to be grounded and ambitious, while Tis the Damn Season, which is sung from Dorothea's perspective, shows that she sees herself as a naive girl with a dream of making it big. Type shit. Track 9, Coney Island, discusses being so consumed in a relationship that you almost lose a part of yourself. Mm. It evokes oh. a feeling of loss and nostalgia, oh. similar to Tolerated. Ooh! Ooh! Ooh, yeah, that's bars. That's like a little bars right there, right? Can we all like, come on now? Yeah. That you almost lose a part. <laughs> Track nine, Coney Island discusses being so consumed in a relationship that you almost lose a part of you. Damn. It evokes a feeling of loss and nostalgia, similar to Tolerated, where the effort given in the relationship was not equal on both sides. <sighs> this song also thematically and lyrically reminds me of All Too Well. Track 9, Ivy, tells the story Ten. of a woman having an affair, <laughs> cheating on her husband. She feels as though her relationship with her husband is dying, and she references this in the pre-chorus where she sings, and the old widow goes to the stone every day. But I don't. I just sit here and wait, grieving for the living. As for the title itself, Ivy is known to spread quick and far, symbolizing that the narrator is consumed in this new affair. Mm, okay. Track 11 is Cowboy Like Me. This song discusses two people who fall in love while hanging out at fancy resorts trying to score rich romantic beneficiaries, as stated by Taylor. These this two is people crazy. start seeing each other after they have a first dance This together. is crazy! All this information just behind songs, bro. It leads to more, and Taylor addresses this in the line, Never wanted love, just a fancy car. The two people Damn. have the same interests in personal gain, but ended up falling in love because of their similarities. What started as a dance ends up with love, which is referred to in the line, dancing is a dangerous game. <sighs> Track 12 is Long Story Short. The song is an overview of how she has been viewed in the public, including her feud with Kanye West, <sighs> being deemed as a serial dater, and any other controversies. This Bro. song details... Kanye Cole, man, I don't care about his... I don't care about anybody's image. Like, I just don't care about them. Because, like, the niggas don't know even... They don't know me. Why should I care about them? I just like their music, because Kanye is so cold, bro. That nigga, he's like the real deal, like, goat, because I can't even fake it, man. One day, I got to react to a Kanye album on here. But I don't know how y'all Swifties going to feel about that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Come on, man. He my favorite artist. You got to give me a break. If you going to be on... You know what I'm saying? We got to be MKers. I still haven't named us yet. <laughs> but if we locked in, fool, y'all got to, you know what I'm saying? I brought Taylor in. You know what I'm saying? Y'all got to, y'all got to, you know what I'm saying? We got to make a trade here. We got to like Kanye a little bit. We got to like Kanye music over here too, man. Can we make that trade? Let me know. 
She tells how she feels peace now and that the stage of her life has come to a close. She feels at peace when she's with her boyfriend, Joe, and he's always been her safe space. He's like the dude from Good Luck Charlie, bro. The older brother? Track the older 13, brother? Track 13, Marjorie, is a tribute to her late grandmother, Marjorie Finlay. Similarly, Track 13 on Folklore was a tribute to her grandfather, Dean. Marjorie was an opera singer and can be heard in the background vocals on this track. In her statement about Evermore, mm. Taylor says that her grandmother still visits her, even if it's only in her dreams. In the bridge, Taylor reflects on what she wishes she had done before her grandmother passed. But the end of the song shows that Taylor still feels Marjorie's presence surrounding her. Dang, R.I.P. Marjorie. Track 14 you is know what I'm saying? This I could ain't be know a reference that. to Scooter Braun, who she has been publicly... So if I said something in my Evermore reaction, this was before the, you know what I'm saying, I'm knowing stuff, so my bad. <laughs> That's just the natural me. You know what I'm saying? Y'all gonna get the natural me over here if y'all not new. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know that. But if you are new, I keep it real over here, cuz. I ain't even gonna fake it to you. 2019, when Scott Borchetta, head of Taylor's previous record label, Big Machine Records, sold all of her masters to Braun. Wow. Taylor has said many times that Scooter's name alone brings her pain, and this is confirmed in the line. Bogus. And seeing the shape of your name still spells out pain. That's bogus. It wasn't right the way it all went down. Taylor had no idea that her masters were being sold, and she is a huge advocate now for artists owning their own work. She doesn't want to hear any more from Borchetta or Braun. She doesn't want the I would have threw up in their face. The last track on Evermore, which is also the title track, details the transformation from a period of deep depression to a place of hope. Mm. The first verse shows how the narrator has been replaying her actions, seeing where she went wrong. She feels as though the pain she's feeling mm. will last forever. The last chorus has a lyric change to, okay. I had a feeling so peculiar, this pain wouldn't be forevermore, which shows the evolution of the narrator. <laughs> I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is something cold. kind of different, but I always love really diving into Taylor's albums Yo, and Taylor lyrics because you cold, everything uh, that she does has a meaning, as we all know. You and cold. I wanted to make this kind of video for anyone. We get it, Madison. Everybody say thank you, Madison. Thank you, Madison. <laughs> but if you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. Roll to 10K is on the way. Make sure you leave a like on the video. Share, tell a friend. And meet you, man.